Hi loves, and welcome to the With Love Always podcast, a podcast to help you live the life you were created for. We are your hosts and your friends, Bree and Marissa, and we're so grateful you're here. We pray you listen and leave feeling more inspired, encouraged, and uplifted. Well, hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode. We are so honored and grateful, as always, that you are here, and we pray as we jump into today's conversation that you just feel like you are a friend sitting at this table with us and just having an open and honest conversation about what we're talking about today. So for today's episode, we are jumping right on into identity and what is your identity? What is your value? What is your purpose? And all of those really big kind of heavy questions that I think we can all say we've had and currently have. And I think a reason why Marissa and I wanted to touch on this topic, even though it can feel like such a loaded topic, is because identity is something that we have definitely grown in and and we have some words of encouragement to share on, but it's definitely something that I know I can say I'm still very much struggling with and it's just more so an ongoing conversation versus like this definite destination of suddenly I know my identity and I know who I am and I know my perfect purpose in this world. I think it's something that is always growing, always evolving, and something that I know so many of us out there are wrestling with the same kind of question marks and conversations about it. So we are really just here today to kind of have that conversation and create a safe space for us to be really honest with our thoughts and the ways that we've grown in our worth, identity, and purpose, and hopefully in the midst of sharing kind of what we've learned along the way that we can really inspire and encourage some of the same in your life. And so Just jumping into the topic of identity, I think there's such an emphasis in this world to try to be unique, but at the same time, I think the world really tries to assimilate us and really tries to make us so similar. We live in a culture in which we are kind of told how to dress or told how to post on Instagram or told the careers that are the most admired and, you know, ways to make money and how to start businesses and all this sort of stuff. And so while we're told this narrative that we should be ourselves and be unique and be different, I think we're also really encouraged to be like everyone else. And so I think in that, we just wanted to just jump right on into identity and what is identity and how the world tries to give us a, tries to give us different metrics of defining ourselves and how we can start unlearning those things. So when I was really like thinking about identity, I was thinking about how we all carry so many different identities. I know for myself, like I am a friend, I'm a roommate, I'm a coworker. I am nobody's spouse. Marissa (laughs) has a different identity than I do. Um, Like Marissa, you're a wife and, you know, just there's so many different identities and like different hats that we always wear. And I think so often when we think of our identity, we're often defining ourselves according to who we are to other people. And I think that is a beautiful thing. And that is definitely our identity to some circumstance. But I think at the same time, there's a lot more to our identity than just who we are to other people, but it's really kind of defining who we are to ourselves. And so like I was sharing, I think with the the way the world works and with culture and social media, I think we are so told to all kind of be like a certain way. Like we all want for women, for example, we're told to like dress a certain way, look a certain way, act a certain way, create certain types of content, you know, whatever it may be. And I think like in a world that is actually telling us that we need to be so the same in order to have value, we really want to encourage in this conversation today that we actually truly do want to start focusing on what makes us uniquely us, uniquely you, and that being the thing that drives your identity and that being the thing that drives your value and your purpose. And so with that said, like we're having this conversation because we are ongoing and we are learning. And so we just kind of wanted to share some of our own personal struggles with identity and kind of like the backstory of where we've been with 
our journey of identity. And it's definitely not one in which I think either of us have arrived, but it's one that we are currently crafting alongside one another as friends, but ultimately alongside God. And so I can just go ahead and like kick off the conversation on, on struggles with identity. And Marissa and I were actually sitting in the kitchen right before this and kind of like just discussing different points in our lives in which we can remember really struggling with, you know, questioning who we are, what our value is and so on and so forth. And I think a time in my life in which I really felt really low and and probably struggled with this question mark the most was definitely those first formative years when I was in college. I remember being 18 and you know, going away for college. I was so excited. I just moved away from home. I'm in a new city. You know, like you feel like the world is just your oyster and you can do absolutely anything. And it's also such a pivotal time, like at 18 years old, when you are so young and you're freshly out of high school and you're entering this new chapter and you just want to be cool and you want to kind of feel like an adult, but also you're trying to make a lot of new friends and it can just feel like a place, at least for myself, where I just felt really lost. And I remember during this time, specifically my freshman year of college, so many people would like naturally ask you like, what do you like to do for fun? Or like, what are you good at? Or what are your hobbies? Or what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, that's probably the number one question, especially entering college of like, what do you want to be? What is your career? Like, what are you looking forward to? Whatever it may be. And I remember just getting asked that so much at 18 years old, freshman year of college and being like, oh my gosh, I literally don't know what I'm good at. And it was, it's so sad, like thinking back to it in hindsight. And I don't know if there's anyone out there who can relate to this feeling, but when people would ask me what I'm good at, I would sometimes respond to, I genuinely think I'm good at nothing. Like I literally didn't know what I was good at. I couldn't tell anyone one thing. And it was not because I wasn't good at anything, but it's because I just didn't know myself well enough to know what I liked, to know what I was gifted at, to know what I was good at. I just didn't have that understanding or knowing of myself to be able to confidently say, oh yeah, like I'm good at this. And so I remember during that time, like because I really lacked a sense of worth and purpose, even like after I would spend time with like new friends or was in any sort of social situation or circumstance, I just remember feeling really lost because I just didn't know who I was. I didn't know the value that I had to offer. I didn't know the kind of friend I was being. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I There's just so many question marks that I didn't have the answer to. And it's just a really lonely feeling when you just really have no grasp of any sort of concept of who you are. And so I would say that was probably one of my lowest points when it comes to thinking back to my struggles with identity. And I think for myself, like I, my faith is really important. And so I actually found God when I was in college. So around 20 years old is when I put my faith in God. And I would say that is when my sense of identity really took a turn because that was for the first time I was able to put my sense of self and worth in something that was so much bigger than me and so much else side of me and also was the first time I realized that like God had so many things to say about who I am and from that lens of the love I started experiencing with God I realized like wow like I'm loved so much that like I was created on purpose for a purpose and I wasn't put here on earth for nothing and so I would say that was definitely a very big turning point for me when it comes to identity and I think kind of fast forward to where I am now I've been walking with God for like six or seven years now, which is so crazy and so special. And I think through the past six or seven years, really kind of seeing my my worth and my purpose here on earth through the lens of God and, and ultimately through the lens of like, 
above anything else the world can tell me that I am, like really digging deep inside of myself to be like, who is Brie? What does Brie like? Who, what is Brie good at? And walking in that worth, that is when my identity really took a turn and really like grew. And I think it's something that though I feel very confident in and have grown to feel confident in today and feel sure in, in in so many ways, it's something that's always growing and it's something that's always subject to change and subject to be added to. And as long as you're adding and changing in the right ways and and not just like the worldly ways. So I think that arrives me to today of like, I'm, I'm still defining that and I'm still trying to figure out who am I and God, what is my purpose? And, and, you know, how can I improve that? So that's a little bit about my story and a little bit of my personal struggles. Um, there's of course so many more, but Marissa, I would love to invite you to talk about the same (laughs) of like, what has identity looks like for you? Because yeah, this is such, it can feel like such an overwhelming topic to even like touch on. So I would love to hear like what your story is. Yeah, honestly, mine's really similar to what you are sharing. When I think specifically to a period in my life where identity is really prevalent, it was kind of same thing like mm. post high school. And I think because up until that point, you don't really have to define who you are. A lot of your life is kind of charted out for you. You have a very set school schedule and your family signs you up for activities or you get told you're good at this thing. You get put in these classes and really people are kind of assigning your identity to you and you're wearing a lot of these labels. And then for the first time when you're like 16, 17, people start to ask, what do you want to do with your life? What's your trajectory? Like, what college do you want to go to? What do you want to do after school? And you're like, I've never thought these things through really. And so for me specifically, when I went to high school, I started working full time. So I was doing modeling when I was going into freshman year. So that was kind of my whole high school experience. Mm -hmm. And then I left my agency right before I graduated high school. So for those four years when everybody was like hanging out with friends and like doing sports and just experiencing, I was just working full time Mm -hmm. and then studying. And so a lot of my life kind of got put on the back burner. And so I all of a sudden come out, have now graduated high school, left the career that I thought was going to lead me towards my life path to some degree. And I just was like, I truly have no idea who the heck I am. Like, same as you. So that for me was such a transformational period. And honestly, I think what was so freeing about that is there was so much possibility and opportunity in that where I started asking myself those questions for the first time of just trying to figure out what do I like? And I just kind of threw myself into everything, like any college club I could join, any friend I could make. I wanted to see and experience so much to just kind of figure out who I was. Um, And I know we'll kind of talk about that a little bit later on of what that process looks like and how you can kind of start to figure that out. But I would absolutely say that I was truly just like so confused with who I was and had no sense of direction for what I was supposed to be doing with my life. So I think that's super common. And honestly, I don't think you ever get to a place where you don't ask yourself that question. Yeah. Even now, I'm like, I would say we're pretty set. We know our identity. We know our worth. But I will have those moments where I'm absolutely praying and I'm like, God, what is my purpose? What am I doing? (laughs) And that's what's kind of cool. And I think what makes this such a fun conversation, but also a fun life is knowing that who I am today is going to continue to evolve. And I'm going to, I'm just such a work in progress. We all are. And that's what makes it so exciting that my story is not finished. It doesn't Mm. end here. And so it's something that I'm going to continue to feel like that 18 year old of what is going on? Who am I? Like, I want to continue to feel that. It's so good. Because I think your horizon and just even what you're capable of, you'll truly surprise yourself. Like this kind of 
specifically, as I just said that I was thinking back to what we were speaking before we even start re- started recording of just this idea of being labeled. And so yep. in high school, I was always labeled as being like so quiet and shy and like to myself and just yeah. like this nice person. And then when I got to college, people were like, you're so bubbly. You're so outgoing. You're so eager to do anything and say yes to anything. And I'm like, that is not how anyone would describe me. So it's so mm. funny I'm coming across that way. And so I'm curious to hear for you, have you felt like you've been falsely labeled in your life? I think we all have, but what specifically has that kind of looked like for you? Yeah, gosh, that is such a good one. And I'm sure it's something that we can all relate to. I would say like similar and like different points in my life people have been like oh Brie like your life is perfect and like you have everything all together and things always like look like they're going their way for you and it's like wow I guess it's like such a kind assumption but that's also like so not true I think something that I was we were talking about also right before we started recording is I think like naturally, like nobody really knows you until they like get to know you. And so something that like people, which is the highest compliment always say, like when they meet me, it's like, oh, you're so sweet, Brie. And I love that compliment. And I do think that's so true of me. But it's funny how like, as I've, you know, been on my own journey of trying to identify who I am and what my purpose is and like the value I bring, there's been times in my life where I'm like, but I'm so much more than that. Like, I'm not just sweet. Like, you know, I'm kind, I'm encouraging, I'm deep. I'm like so many other things. I'm funny. I think I'm funny. (laughs) And it's just funny how like, truly when we also put our our identity in the hands of others, it's so limited. Like people Mm -hmm. only have access to a very limited amount of us. Like, I mean, our closest friends, our family, like know so much more of us, but I would say that's why it's so important to really harness our own identity and be like, no, this is who I am. Like, thank you for insight into who you think I am, but like, let me tell you who I am. And I think that's like why we really want to bring up this conversation on identity because for better or for worse, like people are always going to seek to tell us who they think we are, but we get the beautiful opportunity to tell them and show them and love them in who we are. So with that said, I feel like, I mean, identity really is such a broad topic. And I think when we talk about it, like if you were to ask me, Brie, like what's your identity? And you were to tell me I had like two sentences to describe it. I would literally not be able to fully Mm -hmm. describe it, I feel like. Um, So I think something that we were just like thinking about is like, what are some of the ways that we can really narrow down the conversation? And something that I was thinking about that has really helped and equipped me is like the ability to really identify my strengths Mm -hmm. and how I can begin applying them. I think that's been a really huge one for me. Um, I don't know if there are any ways in which like you feel like you've been able to really start identifying your identity. (laughs) Yeah, no, I agree. That is kind of like challenging to unpack. I would absolutely say strengths, but sometimes you don't even know what your strengths are. So if you are struggling with that, or you're like taking those like strengths tests online, Mm -hmm. I still like to a degree, I'm like, I don't know that I've gotten any insight from that or sometimes yeah. it just makes me more confused and I I definitely struggle with what my strengths are um so something that I've kind of will depend on a little bit is just trying to unpack like what I care about mm. or what I value so part of that is even like what fills me up like when do I feel recharged and it can beautiful. be even just like silly little things like cleaning recharges me and just like write those things down and start to see if they're like common threads mm-hmm. because that might actually be indicative of like this is something in your character that is so unique to you and actually is a strength that people wouldn't even be able to pinpoint but it's just a way you see the world which that's the strength of all of ours is our perspective our story that's so, so good like I can tell you I don't I don't like to clean <laughs> <laughs> so that's your unique value right there 
Yeah, I think figuring out what you enjoy, also what you don't enjoy, if that's an easier place to start. I know I did that in Mm. high school. I was like, I have no idea what I want to do, but I know what I don't want to do. And so I just kind of started to narrow down. And we we will start to realize that we know ourselves better than we give ourselves credit for. Mm. Because we're, you know, with ourselves every single day. And it's just kind of defining that terminology that can actually become so freeing for us when we have that, honestly, just confidence to stand in the ability to say, like, I know that my strength is understanding people. And that can lead to a lot of different there are a lot of different ways you can use your strengths. Yeah. Um, but kind of just starting to unpack that process of becoming more self, self-aware, self figuring out just who you are in all the facets, kind of starting to define what you do and don't like. Um, and part of that is just trying things, asking like your close friends and family what they see in you that's unique. Mm-hmm. Maybe even starting with that, like what about you is unique? Yeah. What about you? Do you know that like if you were in a room of 10 people, you'd be like the most capable of or like you'd be the like world in this unique way. Like you'd make that situation the funniest or the most encouraging Mm. or the most peaceful, whatever it might be. Starting to understand what your presence as a human being contributes and know that that can also continue to grow and evolve. You don't have to stay where you're at, but just kind of start to see those little common threads that I think will continue to surface throughout your life, if you can start to just analyze that. But I know that was kind of a lot. (laughs) No, that was so, so, so powerful, Marissa. I loved everything you said. And I feel like it even challenges me in this very conversation of like, wow, like those are the kinds of like check-ins and reflections I want to have with myself and allowing that to be ongoing and allowing that to continue to keep changing as we keep getting older as well I think like the things that we're good at when we are in high school might be different than what we're good at when we're in college which might be different than what we're good at when we're post-grad and in our late 20s and you know so on and so forth and so I love those conversations that we can like start inviting with ourselves and I think you know speaking on the topic of like knowing your value and identifying your strengths and identifying your value in those strengths, something that I personally have started asking myself in moments when I really want to press into what is my strengths? What are my value? And also even if I'm like just struggling with my own sense of identity, which I struggle plenty. And so a question I like to incorporate and ask myself is, If the world was blind, what would I be known by? And the reason why I feel like this is such an important question when it comes to your identity is because like going back to the beginning and the introduction on identity, the world is going to try to define your identity. People are going to try to define your identity. And I think the easiest way that people like to define our identity is by things that are tangible. It's by the amount of money in our bank account. It's by the clothes that we wear. It's by the cars that we drive. It's by the businesses we own or the colleges we go to or the sports that we play. It's according to your relationship status. And like, don't hear me wrong. These are also such beautiful identifiers like these can all be incredible things like there's nothing wrong with identifying with some of these things I think it's natural I think we should be doing those things you Mm -hmm. know like it would be wrong of Marissa to not identify as a wife and it would be wrong of me to not identify as I don't know a coworker to someone like you know like I think these are these are beautiful things but When it comes to really knowing who I am, I want to be sure that my identity is on the foundation of something that cannot be taken away. And so I think about it from that standpoint. And so to what Marissa just said is like, when I walk into a room, what is the thing that I'm bringing to that room? Like, do I know that I'm gifted in encouragement? That's one of my personal gifts I I've grown in and took me years of you know stepping into myself to realize like no this is not how everyone thinks and this is not how everyone speaks like this is the gift that God has given me and when I get to take ownership of that gift I get to walk into a room owning the gift that God has given me and being like 
I get the opportunity to love and encourage people in this room because this is the value that I bring into this room. And so I think when we give ourselves permission to let go of the external pressures of this world and of what other people think of us, then is like the perfect time to really begin to self-identify, know what, who do I say I am? And kind of coming back to that question of like, the world will tell you who you are, but you get to come back and tell them who you really are. So with all that said, Marissa, I would love to hear some ways that you feel like you've been able to really tap into identifying your own value and your own strengths. Yeah, I think part of that is just leaning into your uniqueness. Like you kind of initially said, Mm -hmm. I think there is such a push for us to be categorized, labeled, or put into boxes. And for me, it's kind of stripping all of the external factors. Mm So my job titles, my, all of the titles that we were just kind of mentioning and evaluating, like, what are the desires of my heart? What do I want to be remembered by? Wow. That's what are these true, like at my core values that are going to carry with me no matter my circumstances. And I think you'll realize that when you start approaching it beyond just yourself and you realize that you have something to give to others, I think that's when I started to feel such value that was just kind of beyond I'm good at this thing. It was, I have something to contribute. I have something that I can give to others, that I can love others in a way that uplifts them and gives them permission to do the same. And so that's Mm. even something I think we need to always kind of remind ourselves of when we're feeling discouraged. We have something to offer the world that nobody else has. We have our complete and utter uniqueness and we're assigned roles that only we can have. Only you can be the mom to your children or the wife to your husband or you know, the daughter to your parents, whatever that might be. Mm. And so there's so much beauty that comes with that. So I don't know if I have one specific answer for it, but I think, yeah, just leaning into what you care about and to kind of touch on jumping back to the story I was saying of when I was in college figuring it out, I realized that my heart was aching for all of these people in these circumstances. And I started just running with that. And I Mm. felt passion in a way I just hadn't really before in my life. And so I think that started to unveil these values in my heart that were crucial to who I was. Yeah. Yeah. And you start to find so much freedom in that. And you don't have to feel like you're enough for somebody else because you're giving from a place of just like, I'm overflowing because I want to contribute something to you. Mm. And I think that just gives you such a sense of freedom. And it's like such a beautiful gift that other people need us in a way that's so unique to us. Uh, That's so good. So I guess that kind of leads me to how do we focus on what we're gifted at versus what we're not? Yeah. Because there's so much. I know. It's so hard. And I think for me, like going back to kind of what we've been saying is like always trying to approach it by focusing on what, what can I bring to a room? Like if the world was blind, going back to that question, it's like, how do I make someone feel? Like, do I make them laugh? Do I make them feel loved? Do I make them feel seen? Do I do I listen really well? And I think the more that we can begin identifying and harnessing those things and being like, wow, like I know that the way that I listen to someone makes them feel really loved. And just reminding yourself and really emphasizing even in your own mind that I think something that we do so often as humans is we normalize ourselves. We think Mm -hmm. that the way we think, we think the way we act, we think that the way that we are a friend or a daughter or a wife or whatever role or identifier that we are in, we think that we're, that's normal. We think that's how, how everyone thinks and everyone operates and everyone lives their life or how everyone shows up as a friend. And I think something that I would encourage all of us, including ourselves, is to normalize ourselves less in the sense that we need to be so appreciative and so in recognition that the way we are is unique. We are so different. We are so one of a kind. There's nobody who, you know, composes a sentence like I do. There's nobody who 
speaks with the spirit that Marissa does. Like it is unique. And I think when we're so in our heads, we just assume that everyone thinks the same and everyone like, I don't know, just like is always the same, but it's like, that's where we just want to really emphasize that your greatest gift is going to be actually when you harness the power of recognizing how different you are. And I think for myself, the more that I learn about myself and the more that I'm like, I know what Brie likes. Like, I know what fills my heart up. I know what I love to fill my time with. I know what sets my heart on fire. I know what depletes me. I know my opinions on things when I'm asked. I know the value I give to a room. I know that it, what if the world was blind, what my greatest weapon of good would be. Like, the more that I know myself in those ways and have sat with myself and canceled out the noise of the world to be like, what is Brie apart from the world? That is when I can focus and laser in on what I'm gifted at. And I think in that, that gives me permission to celebrate what other people are gifted at and what I'm not (laughs) gifted at. And so I think that kind of like also transitions into this whole topic of identity. I know for myself, like one of the biggest ways that I have grown in a confident assured identity is by accepting myself like I don't think that a strong identity and a lack of self-acceptance can coexist I think naturally we are humans and we are all going to be insecure like I think that's definitely normal but I think there has to be a level of accepting who you are accepting how God has created you accepting your unique design and the way your mind works and accepting just yourself for all that you are I think that is the best foundation in which we can build an identity on. So Marissa, I would love to ask you because I know self-love and self-acceptance is huge, but also once again, very broad. I would love to hear about what are some of the ways that you feel like someone can begin in practicing that self-acceptance and self-love? I think it's such a challenge. Like when I was younger, I think I was so debilitated by perfectionism. And not to say that I don't still have that desire. I think I lean very much towards wanting to be perfect. I think a lot of us do. But something that gave me so much freedom was I've learned to love who I am in the messy. And what I mean by that is like the work in progress. And so I would just say that like truly we all are messy people. We all are striving to be a better version of ourselves. And that is what's beautiful and so meaningful of our lives is that it'll be Mm -hmm. marked by such growth. And I'm glad we don't Like you don't still want to be a child at 18 versus Mm -hmm. like 30 versus 40. You want to have those markers. So I think having grace for yourself that you are this work in progress, set your sights on who you want to become, the areas you want to grow in. And that's beautiful and that should be celebrated. And honestly, there's so much beauty that comes through our weakness. So I even get hesitant sometimes when I sit down and try to evaluate my strengths because I feel like. God has led me so much in my weakness and he's leaned on that. So I'm like, evaluate your strengths and your weaknesses because those will both come into play. Those are both unique factors for you. Yeah. And it's all part of the like big, beautiful part of your story. And so how I think you can just like love yourself more is just love that we all are striving to be better. Love that you are committed to being a better person. And that's like what gives me peace is just Mm. knowing that I have this fuel to get up tomorrow and to try to show up to be a better person. Mm. And I'm going to continue to fail, but that desire is never put out. And I have things that like truly fill my soul and ignite me with passion. And I feel just honestly called, like I just feel that like conviction from God that I, there's a striving in me and I think there is in all of us and to channel that energy that we would put in tearing ourselves down or feeling like we're not there yet to be like yes we're not there yet and that's what's so cool let's see like how we can continue to just grow and push for more our version of more not somebody else's but the version of us that we don't even know yet that we get to create and just have fun in that process like just enjoy that you're gonna have days where you realize like oh I don't actually like that food and I 
I know that's a super silly example, but that's so it's good just too. like cool that every day I'm learning something new about myself yeah. of like, oh, this is hard for me or, oh, I don't actually think like everybody else. Let's lean into that and see why that could actually be beneficial. So I think just embrace all of those areas. And again, mm. just find freedom and give yourself grace. Like truly, I just hope that we can love ourselves where we're at because God loves us where we're at. Your friends, family, loved ones love you where you're at. Yeah. So learn to do that for yourself mm. and just know that like you truly are your biggest critic. Nobody else is expecting the version of yourself that you're expecting. So Wow. I feel like I need to like listen back to this episode just to hear that again. Oh, that just blew me away. That was incredible. I think that kind of touches on just the desire of like comparison. I feel like yeah. we all are so inclined to compare to others. Yeah. And I know we did a whole episode on this, but how do you kind of navigate that when you're just like tempted to compare yourself and it's hard to accept yourself in those areas of uniqueness? Yeah. Gosh, that's so hard. And I think when it comes to like the topic of identity, something I used to really, really, really struggle with and like would crush my little spirit is I remember when I would like meet someone who I felt like was super similar to me. So like maybe someone who was like really outgoing and like bubbly and just possessed qualities that mirrored mine. I remember I would feel so defeated and I would literally ask myself, why would someone want to be my friend if they can get everything that I have in someone else? And something that God had to really teach me in that is that, Brie, we are all created in the image of a perfect God. So it's like, because we're all created in the image, like, of course, we are going to have similarities with people. But like, even in that, just because you are similar to someone else doesn't mean you're a copy of someone else and does not give you permission or an invitation to think that you have to be like someone else. You still have your own unique value and you are still your own unique person, even if you have similarities, same talents, interests, desires, gifts, goals, dreams as someone else, you're still going to operate and do it and move in a way that's so unique. Outcomes might look the same. Things might look similar, but it's still unique. So don't think for a moment you're a copy and don't think for a moment that that means you have to try to show up like somebody else who's similar to you. And I think in the same vein, like I remember the opposite of that, like being so defeated when I would meet someone who is the exact opposite of me, like so, so, so opposite, whether it's physically or whether it's like personality I think something that would really specifically defeat me was like always a personality for me. I don't know why that was just such an area of deep insecurity for me of just like always questioning my personality and questioning if I was someone who people would want to be friends with. And I remember when I would meet people who are just opposite of me, like personality wise, and I would be like, oh God, like why was I not created that way? Like why can't I be like this person's presence and have this person's humor and be outgoing in this way or be like gentle and sweet in this way? Like, and God had to remind me once again, it's like, Brie, like you are still created in the image and so is this person. And things created in the image, like they can be similar, but they are meant to be unique because you are your own masterpiece. You are not meant to look like a, a duplicate of someone else. And so the more that I press into that of like, I am not a copy of someone else and I'm my own masterpiece, that really just removes this feeling that like life has to be this competition. At the end of the day, like God created it for it to be like a collaboration with those around us versus a competition. and when I'm able to see it through that lens, it really is like such an encouragement for me in my own life, but also an encouragement for me to like really champion people well in my life around me. Cause I'm like, man, I want to see those around me excel in the gifts and the unique value that God has given them because then that only gives me permission to continue doing the same. Because when I see someone's true value, like I feel like it's like holding up a mirror and allowing me an invitation to see my own. And so, yeah, I would say that's, that's really beautiful. That's what helps me. Um, but with all that said, 
There's like so many things to say when it comes to the topic of identity and knowing your worth and knowing your value. And it's something that like this is just scratching the surface. And this is just something that we are kind of introducing the the conversation about, but something that is so ongoing and we want to dive so much deeper into. But I think to kind of like close us off and like wrap this up, I, I think something that's so important to Marissa and I is for us to share where our ultimate sense of value comes from. And for us, like our faith is so important to us. And I know in both of our stories, like we shared earlier, just like glimpses of like, I think for me, a really defining part of my story and a defining part of my personal conversations with identity had to do when I invited God into the picture and I realized that my identity is so much bigger than anything I could ever identify for myself. When I was trying to grasp a sense of identity for myself, I struggled and I missed the mark and I didn't really have the words or the the descriptors or even the self-love for myself to tell myself who I am. But I think that was what was so beautiful when I began having a relationship with God and and really put my faith in a God who is so much bigger than me. I realized when I didn't have the words for myself, God always did. He always had identity statements over who I am and he called me beloved and he called me his daughter. He called me his child. He called me his friend and he loved me even in moments I didn't love myself. And I think it's from that place that I personally began to experience so much love and so much joy and healing that from that place of love and overflow was I able to reflect and go into my own life and love myself the same. And then in that love others through that lens. And so just reminding ourselves that we truly are one of a kind and that no matter where you stand and like what you believe, like this is such a safe space for for you in this conversation. And, and this is also a space for us to just simply remind you that you are one of a kind and remind yourself that someone else's value is not a threat to your own and someone else's beauty isn't at the expense of your own. And I just want to speak Ephesians 2.10 over all of us that are listening for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And so I share that because I just want to so remind you that you were created on purpose for a purpose. And I believe that your life was intentionally created. And I believe the more that you start stepping into your own value and worth and having these open and honest conversations with yourself and with others around you, the more that you will begin to see just the purpose that you were created for. You have a skill here on earth. You have a need that only you can fill. And I think that need is in your relationships around you, but I think the world needs you for whatever degree that you were created for. And I just want to speak that. And just as we could say, like this podcast is something that we've created and it's our workmanship because we created it with our skill in the same way God created you with his skill. And that is just like such a beautiful call over your life that you were created so intentionally here on earth. And so I want to kind of close this off by just reminding all of us, including myself in moments that my identity feels so fleeting something I like to speak over myself is that my identity is not in who you are or your identity is not in who you are, but it's in whose you are, which we believe that we are God's chosen and we are his daughters and we are his beloved. And it's from that beautiful, safe and sound and hopeful, peaceful place that I feel the most secure Thank you guys so much for listening and joining us in this conversation on identity. We're really excited to continue to unpack all the facets, purpose, value, just going deeper with all of these concepts. We hope most of all, it just encouraged you guys and we're excited to just kind of continue to grow this conversation. Mm. With that, we're transitioning to our favorite segment. So today we are doing most recent. We're going to expose each other. Brie, first question, most recent meal you've had? (laughs) 
Okay, so we had lunch together, which we literally ate like the same lunch. But then I had a snack between recording our podcast episode and I ate so much chips and salsa. So I guess that's my most recent meal. I ate like a meal's worth of chips and salsa. It's so funny because you were snacking for like a substantial period of time. Yeah. And I did not grab a single bite. And then the moment you stopped, I was like, I really need a snack. So same. Mine was, I think I was having chips hummus and carrots and they're just sustaining yeah it's a delicious snack so good <laughs> okay most recent texts you've sent I'm gonna pull okay up let mine. me pull up my phone actually my most recent text was to you when I was getting out of the car I don't believe it <laughs> just kidding it is it says on the phone be in in a set okay my name I received my most recent from my husband asking what oh <laughs> and then what? um to my dad saying oopsie not for you <laughs> oh yeah I was there for both of those so nothing crazy nothing crazy maybe next time we'll expose ourselves um okay most recent show you've watched Ooh, this is one I actually can't answer I don't really watch shows have we talked about that yeah that's why I truly made this question because I was so curious Mm -hmm. what it was but I like could not tell you do you have a most recent movie yes which I think I might have answered this in the last podcast which just shows how much I don't watch movies um it's your place or mine with Reese Witherspoon and Ashton Kutcher it's like the new Netflix movie I thought it was so cute but that's the last movie I watched and that was like three weeks ago okay I admire that I need to get better John is like such a tv movie guy and I used to not have like a tv in my apartment and it was the best thing ever and now I like end of day just like want to lay down and watch shows so the last one I watched it's on Amazon Prime it's called Daisy Jones and the Six I believe okay that sounds familiar it's actually really cute I would recommend it it's I think there's like new episodes every Friday so you can join me (laughs) you know what I hear like I hear I hear that from a lot of married couples like it's always like the thing to do like some of my friends like before they got married like never watched shows like me and then they got married and they are like all about their shows so maybe it's just not my time yet (laughs) it's kind of like the best thing and the worst thing it truly is a moment where we can like come together and it like feels intentional when we like intentionally watch a show together but at the same time i'm like consuming so much more tv so it's a love hate love hate um okay most recent song slash podcast you've listened to let me see so you can do either i know my song it's something country let's see Oh, High Up by Half Alive was the song I was listening to. I was jamming out to it. I'm also going to pull up my most recent podcast. Oh, my gosh. No surprise here. Jay Shetty. Jay Shetty. We love Jay Shetty's podcast so much. So I was listening. I didn't finish it yet, actually. I think I'm halfway through. But Jay Shetty's recent episode, and it's how to physically release trauma and why you should focus on discipline over motivation to succeed. Ooh, that sounds like a Such good Such incredible one. topics. Blown away always. So I am currently on a country kick with music, and it's the New Boots playlist. The one it shows is... New Boots. <laughs> yeah, New Boots. It's so cute. Them Girls Do by Willie Jones. Ooh. Don't know what that is. Um, I'll have to listen to it in the car. But yeah, I recommend... I think that's a playlist that Spotify might have made, so okay. get your country on. Yeehaw. Okay, last question. Most recent time you've been on a plane? Okay, so I was on a plane last Monday. I went to San Francisco for work. We're going to catch up on how that went after oh, yeah. this. Yes. But mine is kind of lame or not lame. It was Christmas time to visit our in-laws. Uh-huh. So that was great. It's just we went to Missouri. Oh, yeah, so, I remember that. Yeah. Not the most exciting place, but very exciting people. So it was worth it. Ooh, can, we, can I throw in one more? Yes, please. Okay, when's the next time we're going to be on a plane? I don't have any trips booked. <gasps> I feel exposed by that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I am planning a Europe trip at the moment, but yeah. I don't have anything booked. So it might be a while out. Yeah. What about yours? I am going to New York which we're going to talk about. I'm going to New York. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm coming. Yeah. You're invited. <laughs> um, I'm going to New York for work. Ooh, 
So I'm That'll excited. That'll be so fun. I'll be there for like a whole week, which is gonna be amazing. Ooh. New York. Okay, <laughs> here I come. <laughs> okay, that concludes our episode. We are loving and praying for you guys. Yeah. Love you guys so much. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We pray this episode was encouraging and life-giving. If you found it valuable, please share it with a friend, leave a review, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us along over on Instagram at With Love Always Podcast. Signing off with all of our love always, Bree and Marissa.